For everybody in the building and those watching on the live stream, welcome to The Gathering. And my name is Julian Peters, and I am the young adult director here at The Gathering. And I'm so excited because this is Sunday. This is a, a, a wonderful Sunday. Why? Because it's the Sunday after the greatest holiday of the year, Thanksgiving. Yeah? How many here had a great Thanksgiving? Agreed, I did too. And I, I love Thanksgiving because when I think about Thanksgiving, I always think about my memories, childhood memories, right? Like we would have our family in town, everybody's coming from different states, different towns, and we all come in and there's this big spread of food and my mouth is watering as, you know, my parents take 15 minutes to say grace and then everybody goes around the table and they start giving thanks. And for some reason, every time I gave thanks, I was embarrassing my mother. So, like, could you imagine me at 10? I'm like, dear God, thank you for not telling my mom to spank me after I got in trouble at school and the teacher got mad at me and she didn't punish me. Like, that, that was everything. I, every time I would pray, that's what I did. I would embarrass her. Mom, if you're watching, I, I'm not blasting you. It's just that, that's, what, that's what life was, okay? So, that was Thanksgiving. And when we think about Thanksgiving, what is it? It's about giving thanks, Right? It's a great time. It's a great holiday. It's great food. It's your friends and family. It's football all day. Like, who doesn't like eating food and watching football all day? Right? And it was a wonderful Thanksgiving for me. This is actually my first Thanksgiving with my wife. With my wife and her family, and we ate, and we had a great time, and it was almost the perfect day until the Cowboys won. That ruined everything. We got Cowboys fans in here. All right. Amen. (laughs) But there's a time when we give thanks and we celebrate and everybody is thankful, right? But I always think about what happens the following day. Like what happens when we're being thankful that following day after Thanksgiving? And no, I'm not talking about putting up Christmas decorations, right? And some of y'all put Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving, and I think that's offensive. But that's that's okay. That's okay. Do what you do. But I'm talking about what do you do following that day of being thankful? Are you thankful outside of Thanksgiving? Are you thankful outside of that holiday? Like when it's the next day and you got a place to be and you're in a rush and you drive down Bell Road and nobody else is. Right? You start swerving in and out of traffic, honking the horn like, hey, get out. Am I the only one that does? Okay. Pray for me, y'all. Okay. Just pray for me. All right. Pray for me. But are you thankful when times are tough? Y'all remember when Pastor Dan, Pastor Michael talked about being in that long hallway, right? And you're walking in that long hallway and you don't know where you're going and you don't really have an answer. You, you're just waiting on God to, to give you an answer and you're walking it out through that long hallway. Are you thankful then? Are you thankful when you're in a situation of waiting? You don't know where you're going. You just got to wait on God. Should I leave this situation? Do I need to go somewhere? Like you don't know. Are you thankful during that time? Are you displaying gratitude okay and I remember when I was in high school seems like a long time ago but when I was in high school I played football for Victory Christian Conquerors that's in Tulsa Oklahoma Victory Christian Conquerors and we had a day I think it was during this week where we had a bye week we didn't have a play the playoffs were the next week so our coach took us to the movies and we went and saw Facing the Giants how many have seen that movie Facing the Giants If you haven't seen that movie, it's an amazing movie, but he took us to see that to go get us pumped up. You know, the bear crawl scene, like the whole nine. But there was a scene in there that always resonated with me. We're going to go ahead and share it. Take a look. You believe God told you to come tell me that? I do. I admit to you I have been struggling, but I've also been praying. I just don't see him at work here. Grant, I heard a story about two farmers who desperately needed rain, and both of them prayed for rain, but only one of them went out and prepared his fields to receive it. Which one do you think trusted God to send the rain? Well, the one who prepared his fields for it. Which one are you? God will send the rain when he's ready. You need to prepare your field to receive it. Man, every time I watch that scene, I, I'm, I, I get excited. But it, it's true. Like, you, we got to be preparing our fields. God will bring the harvest. We got to be preparing our fields. But we're talking about 
facing the Giants. And when you, when you watch that movie, the coach, the guy that's speaking, he's going through a really tough time, right? Like he's in a, he's in a town where the football team's not that good. He's on the brink of losing his job. Him and his wife are struggling financially. She's struggling to get pregnant. They got a car that's broke down. And you can tell that that's starting to weigh on him. It's starting to burden him, right? It's, it's everything he's seeing is negative, right? He can't see any positive. He can't see any opportunities for what God is trying to show him because all he sees is negative in front of him. And how many have been in that situation when you're going through a dark time or you're going through a, a, a situation of waiting or you don't understand? And it's like, God, like, why is this so hard for me? Why am I struggling right now? Yeah? And it's like, do do I need to leave? Should I stay? Should I go? You want to pack up and leave, but you don't know what God is doing. You don't know what he's telling you. You just got to sit and wait. And there was a time in my life, a period in my life, where I lacked gratitude in everything. Like, literally everything. Every single thing I lacked gratitude in. For instance, I'm in college at this time, right? My car. I was driving a hoopty. Y'all can laugh. It's okay. It was a hoopty. And I used to get so embarrassed about driving the car because all my friends had nice cars, right? They had nice cars. I didn't want to pull up in my hoopty and get made fun of and laughed at. So I didn't appreciate that car. I couldn't stand that car. And then there was a certain time where obviously I'm, I'm, I'm going through things, right? I'm going through things in my life and I'm upset. I don't like the car I have. The school that I was at is way too small. Right? I wanted to, to have a college experience, which I don't even know what that was, but I just knew it wasn't at the school I was at. I was struggling financially. My mom didn't have money to send to me, so I couldn't go out to eat with my friends. Like Everything in front of me was negative, including the hoopty car. Right? And so I remember I decided I'm going to start hanging out with my friends. My behavior started to go down, and I ended up dropping out of school. I dropped out of college start hanging out with my friends. I decided I was going to work. I used to work at Qdoba, which, by the way, if you haven't had it, it's way better than Chipotle. Like, no lie. But Qdoba, I used to start working there. I got my own apartment, and I was just going to work, and I was going to make my own money and do my own thing because I was going to make that living that I wanted. And then I got this random call one day at 1 o'clock a.m. See, I had let my friend borrow my car that night. I didn't want to go out. I had to work in the morning. So I let him borrow my car, and I get this phone call at 1 o'clock a.m. Like, that's never good. On the other line, my friend's like, dude, we messed up. I'm like, what are you talking about? So my friend was using my car to sell drugs during that time. And what he was doing is he was driving from place to place and delivering drugs to whoever wanted them or whatever and selling them. And he went to a gas station. This is all true. None of this is fabricated. And he went to a gas station, and an undercover cop actually popped out the gas station and saw him. And my friend jumped, ran, took his bag of drugs and just threw him in my car. So my car ended up getting taken by the police for a year and sitting at a car lot because they were investigating the case and making a ruling on the decision. So that hoopty that I hated, oh, I missed thee. <laughs> because I didn't have a car, right? I didn't have a car, but what I realized during that time It's hard for God to bless you with more when you're focused on how little you have. It is hard. It is hard. So what did I have to do? I had to change my attitude. I had to change my mindset. The title of today's message is Gratitude Attitude. It's gratitude attitude because I believe we have to start practicing gratitude. And why do we need to practice gratitude? Because it can help grow our faith and build our personal relationship with Jesus. And I don't really think we understand how many opportunities we have to display gratitude through our day to day. Like, I don't think about it. Like, when you think about gratitude, what is it? I'm thankful. I think it. I'm thankful. Oh, you did this for me? I'm thankful. Or you might say, thank you, right? But I think there's more to gratitude. So I want y'all to think about gratitude in three different ways, three different parts. We can display gratitude in our thoughts and how we feel. We can display gratitude in our words and how we express. And we can display gratitude in how we act, our actions. 
right? All three are opportunities for us to display gratitude to God and continue to grow our faith and build our personal relationships with Jesus. So I think the next question is, well, what exactly is gratitude, right? Definition. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return to kindness. That is what gratitude is, okay? And 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So the first thing I want you to think about, gratitude is how we avoid entitlement. And I know we got some older generations out there. I'm not calling you old. Don't take it that way. We got some generations that are, 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 are older than us. And what do they always say about the younger generation? These kids, don't, these kids are spoiled. These kids are entitled. Well, how do we reverse, how do we reverse that? Start practicing gratitude in the home. Start practicing gratitude with your kids. We have to start practicing and displaying gratitude. Because gratitude is how we stay focused on what God has provided for us. Right? So when I think and I read that verse, give thanks in all circumstances, it makes me think of all the opportunities I miss to give God thanks in my life and in my day to day. Right? That hoopty. I wasn't very grateful for that hoopty. I wasn't very thankful for that hoopty. I missed on my opportunity with the car to be grateful, and that car was getting me from A to B. And it's kind of funny because God took it from me. You're not going to be grateful here. (laughs) You don't have a car. You don't know what it's like to have to borrow people's cars or ask for rides, and, hey, can you pick me up at 3.30 and and take me here? Like, I was miserable at that time, but that was a lesson I needed to learn. You're not going to be grateful. It can be taken away from you, right? And then I think about my job. I'm not going to tell you what company I work for, but I am a property adjuster for an insurance company. Okay? Um, What do I do? You got a storm, it's on your roof, you got roof damage, you got water damage in your home, you file a claim with our insurance company, I have to come out there, I take pictures, I write an estimate, I deal with the customer, I do the whole nine. Which, by the way, like, I did not realize how many water heaters fell in this world until I moved to Arizona. Like... It is a t- every week somebody's water heater is cracked and broke and went into the wall. I don't get it, but that's, that's a different conversation. But that's what I do, right? And there was a time where I was on the brink of losing my job, right? I was on the brink of losing my job. This is the same job that I was praying for to help get me down here. Like, if you know my story, there was a time when I was trying to move down here and I was struggling to find a place to live and they wouldn't give me a place to live unless I had a job and God opened the door for both of those things because I didn't have a lot of experience to get this job. But now I'm mad. Now I don't like the job. I don't want to be here. And my performance begins to go down, right? My performance gets to go down. I become frustrated. I'm not happy. I'm tired of talking to people, and I'm so tired of water heaters. I'm sick of them, right? But that's when God told me something. He said, I opened up this door for you, and yet your attitude, your words, and your actions have shown you're not grateful for it. And I'm like, okay. And I think God knows that I'm a little hard-headed. So, like, he can say that, but he got to say something else for me to really get it. So after that, he followed it up with, if I can't trust you with little, I can't trust you with much. And I'm, whenever, whenever he said that, obviously that dealt with me, right? It let me know I needed to start changing my attitude. I need to start displaying gratitude. But I also thought about a book I read. So I read this book back in college, which, by the way, if I share a book with y'all, you know it's good. I read, like, two books my whole entire time in college. <laughs> like, you know, you know it was an amazing book because Cliff Notes, Spark Notes, Prezies, like, I, my friend's notes, I'm doing whatever I could to avoid reading. So you know this was a good book. And the book was called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in that, it's a bunch of different CEOs and athletes and millionaires and business owners and what they do, how they, what are their routines, what do they do to start their day, what do they do to be successful. And I remember a chapter that, dis- that was discussed about this Indian millionaire, right? He was a CEO, he owned several businesses, he, you know, had a bunch of businesses and all those things over in India, and they asked him what was one of his habits, and he said, 
every day that he wakes up, he thanks God for food, shelter, and water. How many can say when you wake up, you're thanking God for food, shelter, and water? I know I can. I was waking up hating my job. Like, I'm just being honest with you. I woke up hating my job. But we got a millionaire here who is thanking God for food, shelter, and water. And he said the reason he did that is because it reminded him of what he came from and what he didn't have and how much of a privilege it is that he gets to wake up with those things right now. It also was an opportunity for him to keep reminding himself that he needs to keep working and keep working because he can't be complacent because he didn't want to go back to that moment as a kid when he didn't have food, shelter, or water. So here I am three months ago, four months ago at my job, and that stuck with me, right? Like, it stuck with me. I'm over here mad about waking up and having a job when this is a job and a blessing and an opportunity that God provided for me that's actually my means of living, This is my opportunity to make money so I can live. This is also my opportunity to show God's love through my job. This is an opportunity to give glory to his name through my work ethic and through what I'm doing. But instead, I'm mad because I don't like it. The job that he blessed me with, right? Yet you got a millionaire CEO who's waking up thanking God for food, shelter, and water. What's the better way to start your day? What's the better way to start your day? Waking up grateful, displaying gratitude, or waking up mad and upset and disconnected from what God has called you to do? Because that's all I was doing when I was waking up mad, right? But when we practice gratitude, we are building a better version of ourselves through Christ. That's why you wake up and you practice gratitude. It's a lot easier to have a positive day When you're waking up and practicing gratitude, understanding the blessings and opportunities that are all around you. When we practice gratitude, we are building a better version of ourselves. So you can display gratitude through your gifts. Right? You can display gratitude through your gifts. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. Each of you, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in his various forms, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So we can use our gifts to display gratitude. And I want y'all to know something. Everybody in this building, everybody watching on the live stream, Each and every one of you sitting down, God has blessed you with the gift. He has blessed you with the gift. He's blessed you with the gift that you are able to use to help build his kingdom and bring glory to his name and help people find and follow Jesus. That's exciting. That's exciting. That's special. God has made you with a purpose and a gift, and you can use that to help build his kingdom. So what does that mean? Well, you could be the fastest computer typer on the west side of the Mississippi. You type 195 minutes or words per minute. God can use that for his kingdom. Right? You may be able to sing. I can't. You may be able to sing. God can use that for his kingdom. You might be strong. I lift weights. I'm swole. Set up and tear down is always in need. He can use that for his kingdom. But you got to understand, when it comes to his gifts, when it comes to our gifts, we have to be ready to use them for his kingdom. We have to be ready to display gratitude through our gifts. And if we're not, we're not doing what God has called us to do. Right? But one thing about our gifts, and one thing that we're not going to do with our gifts, if we know that God has gifted us to us, he's gifted us to do these things, we're not going to let fear stop us from using our gifts. Right? We're not going to let doubt. I don't know if I should do this. Like, they might not like it. I don't know if I'm... We're not going to let doubt cause us not to use our gifts. We're not even letting inexperience cause us not to use our gifts. Because God has called you and he's created you with a gift and a purpose. And in order to display gratitude, we got to use those gifts for his kingdom. But there's a reverse to that too, right? 
because you have gifts. And just like using the gifts, we can also become lazy and complacent with our gifts, right? And, and y'all know me. I give quotes. I gave a quote last time. Here it is. Success breeds complacency. If y'all were here, y'all remember that, right? And we can't become lazy and complacent with our gifts. So how many in here have heard of Jalen Ramsey? Yeah? That's Jalen Ramsey. I actually found that picture, and I thought it was cool. Like, it's the Cardinals. We in Arizona. That's Jalen on the other side playing corner. The Rams probably won this game by, like, 50 because we know the Cardinals ain't any good. But, yeah, it made sense to put it up there. But Jalen is a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro. He's won a Super Bowl. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. Probably, I don't, if you want to rank him, you can rank him. But he's one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, right? And I was watching a podcast where they were interviewing Jalen. And they said that. They said, man, you're a five-time Pro Bowler. You're a three-time All-Pro. You've got one of the highest-paid contracts in the NFL. You just won a Super Bowl. How do you keep working? How do you stay motivated? And I remember Jalen's answer shocked me. He said, man, he said it just like this. God done bless me. That was his exact response. God done bless me. And I kind of sat back, and I'm like, what does he mean? And they asked him to explain. He said, I feel like God has given me a gift and an ability to play football. So every time I'm on that field, every time I'm practicing, I'm doing everything in my power to master my craft. Because if I'm not, I feel like I'm cheating him. Now, I, I don't... I don't know if Jalen Ramsey is a big believer, but he spoke to me. <laughs> he spoke to me in that interview because it made me think about me and it made me think about how do I use my gifts? Like, are we sitting on our gifts and are we becoming complacent with our gifts? And if we are, we are not displaying gratitude, right? So if you aren't working to improve your gift, you aren't trying to master your craft. You're not going to God and trying to figure out what ways I can improve and make this better. How can I make this a better product? How can I do whatever it is he calls him to do to build his kingdom and realize that with his guidance in your gift, he can expand that gift. And that allows you to help find more people that can find and follow Jesus. We are doing a disservice. We're not displaying gratitude. And I'll take it a step further. You're not fulfilling your purpose. You are not fulfilling your purpose unless you start using your gifts. Start using your gifts to display gratitude and help build his kingdom. You don't have to fear, right? I'll tell y'all right now, I didn't know this was a gift being up here. Thank God for this opportunity. Thank Pastor John for seeing that in me. But I was terrified the first time I did this. Sweating bullets back there. I called my mama. Pray for me. It's the truth. I do that all the time, but like that, that was the time. I need mom, I need you, I need you. But you're displaying gratitude when you use your gifts. Do not not use your gifts and not fulfill the purpose that God has called for you. And that leads to gratitude in our actions, right? So church, it's not enough to think gratitude, right? It's not enough to speak gratitude. I'm challenging myself today, and I'm challenging everybody in here and everybody watching we got to act with gratitude, right? Gratitude in our actions, gratitude in our work ethic, gratitude in our discipline. All three of those things we can use when we act with gratitude. So you might be having a hard time at your job currently, right? Y'all just heard me talk about that. You might be having a hard time at your job. What if you start applying the gratitude attitude to your job, right? What if you start applying that to your work ethic and to your discipline? Watch how your performance increases. We can go back to my situation, right? I just told y'all how I was on the brink of losing my job, right? I started applying the gratitude attitude to my job, to my work ethic, to my discipline. My performance increased. My supervisor at the time called me. He said, hey, I got an opportunity for you. I'm like, okay, what is it? We just had a big storm here in Phoenix. Y'all remember it was around September. Monsoons hit, right? A bunch of people called and they had roof clamps. So they put me on cat team. Right? They put me on catastrophe team. He said, you can stay in Phoenix. You'll be working 30 days straight. You get about 60 claims up front. But every weekday, it's an extra $115. And every weekend, it's an extra $150. So I took that opportunity. You can't tell me God don't work because I was able to use that money with the money I had saved to buy an engagement ring. 
You can't tell me God don't work. And it's funny because my manager thought I was doing that to make the company happy, to make him happy. I was focused on displaying gratitude. I was focused on staying connected with Christ. So yes, it's cool that my job noticed it. And it's great that I got that money and I was able to do so. But it's even cooler that through displaying gratitude, my faith grew. That's what we're paying attention to. So, young people. We got young people in here? Y'all can be louder than that. We got young people in here? Thank you. Young people, y'all play sports? Some of y'all might play sports. Some of y'all might be in drama. Some of y'all might be in that. You display gratitude with how you practice. You display gratitude when you're on the field. Young people, y'all go to school? You display gratitude when you're in class. You display gratitude with how you behave in class, how you study, how you take tests. You display gratitude with how you treat your parents. Parents, come on, y'all gotta be like, yes, amen. Like, come on now. Come on, parents. (laughs) There you go, there you go. But displaying gratitude in our actions is a way, again, for us to create better versions of ourselves. And for some of y'all, y'all know this. I like to lift weights. Ooh, ooh, like, right? I like to lift weights. And I met this guy. His name is James Berger. So James is actually an IFBB pro professional bodybuilder, right? He's an IFBB pro. He just competed at the Arnold this year. And I did a podcast. I had a podcast and I interviewed James and he talked about how he ended up in the wheelchair. So he was going through a really dark time. He was going through some depression. He was drinking a lot. He ended up driving his, driving his car down a back alley, headed home, drove off a ditch, flipped his car six times and snapped his vertebrae. Instantly paralyzed. And I remember talking to him and I'm like, hey man, like if you could ever go back in time, right? And, and take that incident away, would you? And he's, his answer is, it shocked me. He said, no. He said, because I wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for this chair. He was like, I wouldn't be able to inspire people and help those who are in chairs that might have just gotten into this situation. And I'm sharing this story and my testimony with them and being able to help people. He's traveled all across the world as a wheelchair bodybuilder promoting this sport. And it was all because of the chair. He was grateful of what happened. Is that not gratitude? And then he used that to help bring people to Jesus and help people find and follow Jesus. And I think about when we talked about gym sessions and he talked about how, you know, on a chest day he would work out and his coach would have to literally strap him to the bench because he's paralyzed and he can't move. So he's strapped and they have to go get his weights and they would walk and get his weights and he would lift them and then they would rack them. And once he was done, they would unstrap him and put him back in the chair and move him to the next position. And that's when I realized there's opportunities for gratitude in everything that we do. Even something like going to the gym is a blessing and an opportunity that not everybody has. Parking at the end of a parking lot at EOS on Bell, making that mile and a half walk to walk into the gym. Not everybody has the opportunity to do that. So you know what I realized? When I go to the gym, it's my opportunity to display gratitude. So I'm gonna work out like God is spotting me on every lift. This is my opportunity to bring gratitude and give him glory in every lift that I have, right? Because not everybody has that opportunity to do so. So gratitude can grow our personal relationships with Jesus, right? And I think when we display gratitude, I don't think, I'm telling you, when we display gratitude, we're seeing the blessing that God has laid all around us. Like that car was a blessing, right? We're seeing the blessing that God has laid all around us. And there's also a peace and an understanding that we get to recognize with gratitude. If we look at Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I want everyone in here to do me a favor after today. Whether you're writing it in a journal, you're doing it on the notes app on your phone, I want you to display or practice gratitude throughout your day, right? When you wake up, I want you to pick some things that might be blessings or opportunities that you might not have paid attention to in your everyday and write those down, right? Write those down throughout today, throughout the day, 
And when you go to sleep, I want you to look at that list. I want you to go to sleep practicing the gratitude and what you're thankful for. And then I want you to wake up practicing gratitude and what you're thankful for. And watch how God can move. Watch how your mood can be elevated. Watch how much positive your days can be. When you start practicing gratitude, you are building a better version of yourself. But I think we don't really understand the opportunities we have. Like the church, the gathering, Pastor John and the Lipinski family, Pastor Michael and the Dan family and the kids ministry and the, the door greeters and the donuts and the coffee and students and young adults. Like, are you understanding that not everybody has the opportunities to have fellowship and community like this? We can display gratitude here at the church through our serving, through what we're doing to help the church grow, how we're trying to increase the church. Because I have a friend, her name is Bree. She's not back there, but she's normally back there. She works live stream for us. Bree's great. She's like my sister. Bree works at a nonprofit, nonprofit organization. That nonprofit organization helps fundraise for persecuted Christians throughout the world. They help fundraise for persecuted Christians throughout the world. They provide the tools and resources to help those Christians in different countries where it's illegal to practice Christianity. Like she talked about a group, she told me a group where it was during the time of COVID and they actually have ID cards where they have to put their religion on it and they weren't giving COVID relief to Christians. They were putting them at the back of the line. So when you think about those times, you think about the opportunity we have You can't wake up on a Sunday like, oh, man, I got to go to church. I got to serve. No, we're not doing that no more. It's a gratitude attitude. We wake up energized. We wake up happy. We wake up blessed knowing that this is an opportunity for us to fellowship with our community. This is an opportunity for us to grow and for our faith to be fed. And you might limp in here. I've done it. I had to limp in here. I was hurting. But we're going to let you leave with more energy. And you're going to walk out of here with hope that you will find and you will follow Jesus. And if you need help throughout the week, we got gathering groups that we can plug you into to get you that help. We got plenty of people here that are willing to talk to you, willing to be with you, willing to help you so you can continue to grow. We're not leaving you alone Monday through Saturday and just having you show up on Sunday. We don't do that at the gathering. How do I know? Because the gathering did that for me. So in closing, guys, y'all see we got the praise and worship team behind us. Right? And what I'm going to need y'all to do, y'all, I, I'm not going to lie, y'all, y'all did pretty good today. He's a little bit hype. I got a couple amens, and I appreciate that. But for this next part, I'm going to need y'all to get up. I'm going to need y'all to have a little bit of energy. Because I want you all to know that no matter what you're going through right now, what may be the issue, what you may be going through, you have a reason to sing. You have a reason to give God the glory. You have a reason to shout. Hold on, let me try this again. Let me try this again. I need y'all to come back with me, all right? When I say something, I need a yeah, I need a roar, I need something, right? We need energy. I want you all to know that no matter what you may be going through, you have a reason to sing. I like it. You have a reason to give him glory. You have a reason to shout. You have a reason to dance. And you have a reason to praise. So let your gratitude attitude shine through. Let's get it. All right, come on, everybody. Put their hands together and worship with us. Come on. Let's take this step. Let everything.
him some praise. I, don't, I, I know you're going through stuff, but can we just give him one more shout of praise today? Can we, can we leave this place with jubilation and joy coming from our hearts and our mouths and our lives and our actions? I praise God for what he's doing in this place. Listen, as you leave today, for some of you, that was a challenge. That word was a challenge to take your next steps. So I want to encourage you for whoever that's for to stop at our Connect Center, sign up for Next, grab your phone, sign up on your app for Next, and take the next steps and watch what God does in your life as you display that gratitude, that attitude of gratitude to a world who needs to see Jesus living in you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless you.